Hey there, I'm Bill. Welcome back to the Tiny Little Workshop. This week I have a brand new to me toy. I bought an Integra DTR-7.8 home theater receiver from about 2007. The problem with this and the sister product, the Onkyos, the equivalent Onkyo would be a TX-SR805. A whole lot of numbers and letters there. Anyway, what happens with these models and the subsequent range of models is that the HDMI board will go bad. The HDMI board sits at the very top here and as heat rises from the amplifier channels and everything, it cooks the HDMI board, the capacitors open up, bad things happen, and you lose audio and video. So it's very common to go in, pull out the HDMI board, desolder all the 100 microfarad capacitors, put brand new ones in, potentially you upgrade them to a higher rating from 85 to 105 degrees centigrade, put it all back together and hope that when the capacitors went out it didn't fry anything else. So the one that I bought, this had already been done. The previous owner had already replaced all the capacitors with brand new 100 microfarads and he still couldn't get it to work. So he sold it on to me, I bought it thinking, hey, you know, even if the HDMI board is bad, I can still use 130 watts per channel times seven. I mean, that's not so bad. It's certainly an upgrade from what I was using. So I bought it, opened it up, and did some troubleshooting. I got it to work, and then to keep it from overheating and having this problem again, I installed a fan on it, and I'll show you how I did that, just to keep it cool and keep things lasting longer. Here she is, 51 pounds of home theater receiver. And this is what showed up on the screen when I plugged in an HDMI source. It just kept cycling over and over. Removing the cover allows us to get up close and personal with the HDMI board itself. Here you can see that there are a number of capacitors, but the ones that we're concerned with are the medium sized ones. They're 100 microfarads. They're the ones obviously marked with a 100 on top. And you can see where the previous owner had done a pretty good job desoldering and replacing them. He even threw in an entire spare set that he had ordered just in case. They come in this kind of bubble pack. Now while I was in there I noticed one little ribbon connector seemed to be just a little loose. So I shoved it back all the way in and voila! The HDMI functions all worked again when I tested it. Well that took all the fun out of it. I was expecting to have to go in and troubleshoot and break out the multimeter and check all the polarity of the caps and everything, but that didn't happen so I had to just move on to the next step which was making sure that it didn't happen again, keeping the HDMI board cool. Here's the built-in power supply for the HDMI board. You have two positive 12 volt wires and two ground wires on the outside. So I rounded up all the 12 volt fans that I happen to have laying around from old computers and such and I found the quietest one of the bunch. Still it was a little loud at full speed. Now I considered wiring in a resistor in line to drop the voltage, but then I realized that there was no room to fit a standard fan above the HDMI board if I ever wanted to put the cover back on again. So this meant that the fan would have to be mounted the ugly way on the outside of the case. Since it was going to be external, I decided to wire it to a spare wall wart power supply that I had laying around instead. Now this one was 6 volts, so it would slow down the fan rotation and quiet it down without needing a resistor. On the rear of the receiver is an outlet that switches on when the unit is powered up. The two power connectors are obviously not the same. I grabbed a three prong connector that I had desoldered from some printed circuit board in the past and I matched it up. I also realized that zip tying the fan directly to the case made it even louder. So instead, I trimmed these corner spacers from some shipping foam and I shimmed up the fan a bit. Quick snip here, and I could strip the insulation from the wires. I gave the shield strands and the inner wire a quick twist. Tinning the leads here. 
and then it was just a matter of soldering the right wires to the right pins. I made sure to slip on some heat shrink tubing beforehand so that I could insulate the bare copper from the wires. And that's it. The fan turns on just as soon as you bring the unit out of standby. So there you have it. Hopefully I get many more years of use out of this really incredible home theater receiver that cost somebody a pretty penny when it was new. And hopefully if you have had this same problem, this will help you get more longevity out of your device as well.